good afternoon again. Uh, I've got a bit of time to kill. In fact, I'm going to pop my tech on break. Yeah, a little bit of time to kill before uh, the fitter comes to collect this load off me. Um, yesterday, I was up in Sunderland and as I drove into Sunderland, there was a, a, t a sign saying, I think, Welcome to Sunderland, twinned with Saint Nazaire. Yeah? Now, to most of you out there, and I mean most of you, that will mean absolutely diddly squat to you. However, it means a lot to me, a, a particular story I followed um, that I'd like to share with you. And you can then choose to have a look at this particular story and let just let me know how it affects you. Let me know how it made you feel. Having, I mean I've read about it and I've seen the documentaries about it. It's something that interests me. I've always been interested in VC winners, Victoria Cross winners. Because, again, not everybody knows this, in order to win a Victoria Cross, which is, an, uh, you have to commit an act of gallantry, you have to be uber brave. Not just brave, not just courageous, you didn't just do this one-off nice thing one time, no. You, the odds are stacked against you ever getting a VC. Ever. And this one particular mission that the commandos took part in. Um, I can't remember how many VCs were awarded, but it was the most VCs ever awarded for one single action. Amazing. Absolutely. It makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. And I'd like to share that with you. Um, so yeah, driving into Sunderland, see St. Nazaire. I think, oh, I know where St. Nazaire is. It's um, a, the northern seaport of um, France, and it's up an estuary. Um, so you've got land to the left, land to the right. And the Germans occupied a dry dock in St. Nazaire. And it was called the Normandy Docks, I think. And this particular dry dock was special for one very important reason. It was the only dry dock big enough to contain the likes of the Tirpitz or the Bismarck. And the Tirpitz was our concern because we were losing ships out in the channel and if um, let's say the Tirpitz was damaged it could limp up to uh, St Nazaire, dry dock, get repaired and be back out again. So it was of utmost importance to cut off that lifeline to make sure that that ship because what the Germans were doing at the time in the Second World War, they were cutting off our lifeline. They were cutting off our supplies. Our whole effort as a country was to, we, we all were all involved in the war effort. So as a result, the country was starving. It really was. So we relied on these ships bringing supplies in and the Germans knew this and they capitalised on it. And they almost won the war through that tactic. Uh, but remember what I told you about grit? Yeah, well, they didn't. And this one particular mission 
that uh, Churchill had given his rubber stamp to. Their commandos were charged with sailing out of Cornwall, up this estuary, past all these um, German sentry posts, and there was dozens of them, right up the middle of this estuary, where they had to dodge obstacles under water, uh, so, so as not to run aground, and they had to find a way to uh, destroy this dock, dry dock. Now they couldn't just bomb it from a Lancaster bomber or whatever, because a it was very it would have been very difficult to destroy like that. But also the um, this guy's looking at me. Go smoke your faction somewhere else. But yeah, this um, it also the bombs weren't very accurate. Dropped from um, aircraft, so it had to it had to be a, a man action. So what what they did is they got this uh, old American warship called. HMS Campbelltown and they made it look like a German frigate so in the dark with the searchlights it would look German now they they flew the German flag the insignia the swastika rather not the German flag and the learnt that the code for signalling they didn't know we got that as a, as, a, as a country and these men had to sail up the middle of this estuary past all these sentry points and every time they were fired upon a couple of times but every time the German uh, sentry post flashed them to signal we were sending the right signals back we were communicating with them and it wasn't until we got maybe half a mile away from the Normandy dock at St Nazaire the game was up they realized they realized that they were under attack and they managed to run this HMS Campbelltown into the gate yeah and it, it drove into the gate and rode up and over it it sat on it didn't destroy the gate at all that was not the purpose they'd actually wired a um a bomb to go off with a, a mercury device i.e this acid was dripping down um and it was slowly but surely eating away at the fuse wire until snap the bomb goes off so yeah they got they got this particular ship there the commandos had gotten off the vessel uh, and they were in these uh, I can't remember what they were called but they were small boats they were wooden hulls wooden and they did got off they went to Saint Nazaire and they would got several objectives including the winding house, the pump house, the power station, everything to do with these docks, they were charged with destroying. And they did that with spectacular results. Absolutely took them totally out, out of action. But the one thing left to do was to destroy the dock gate. And the Germans were laughing because they were. Um, they were saying, how did you, how, oh, let me do a German accent for you, how did you expect to destroy such a sturdy gate with a little ship like that? And they'd all been captured at this stage, um, they were taken prisoner of war, and they were sat on the dockside next to the ship, and they were marched away past it, and there was a load of German soldiers on it, souvenir hunting, you know, picking over it and whatnot and um, they had to 
not show any fear as they walked past the ship because it could have gone off at any minute and then they got halfway from where the ship was where they're marching away and lo and behold bang the ship blew up totally destroying the gate totally taking the uh, um, the docks out of action so yeah and you imagine that having to go up through this estuary under fire and these boats I can't remember what they were called these these particular boats but I know there's a couple of tourist attractions using them to ferry people around still today but they were made out of planks of wood overlapping and these half of these men knew they weren't going to come back they knew it absolutely knew they weren't going to come back and lo and behold half of them didn't but the act the act of courage shown in that one action was remarkable now I've been down to the port in Cornwall to pay my respects because it really moved me this story but you have a look at it for yourself see, see what you think if you go onto YouTube and you type in greatest raid of all because that in in military circles that's what it's known as the the greatest raid of all you'll um, you'll see Jeremy Clarkson presenting this particular story and it's fascinating He's an ideal man for the job tells the story very well um, yeah so he um, if, if you type it in the greatest raid of all and you just see what you you make to it it's about an hour long documentary but um, yeah let me know I just thought I'd share that with you because it's something that really really left an impression on me I thought those men just and they were regular men you know drafted into the army and as we know the commandos was made out of the cream of the army they were cherry picked uh, from each battalion but yeah these this particular uh, action it makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck and they get my full and undivided respect for it so yeah it just made me think of that seeing that one sign in uh, Sunderland twinned with St Nazaire and I shall go there one day I shall go to the Normandy docks one day um, and see it for myself it's, the whole story fascinated me but you type that in YouTube you're gonna have a look at it if you if you want if this this pricked prick your interest which I hope it has and you let me know how it, what impression it made to you so there you go I just thought I'd share that with you Saint Nazaire catch you later